Today we'll transform this boring basement into a flooded basement. I'll give a brief overview of how I created the CG elements in Blender, but we'll focus most of our time on learning the basics of compositing in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Here is the final commercial. I think we have some pickles downstairs. Oh. This commercial was created by the super awesome, talented guys over at Threefold. They also made a really cool behind the scenes that shows you how they pulled off some of the practical water effects, among other tips and tricks. Definitely check it out, I'll link it in the description. Now, in the interest of time, here's a super quick overview of the blender part of this tutorial. The guys at Threefold supplied me with 8K raw footage. I took this into DaVinci Resolve and exported a 4K EXR sequence. Since this is a static shot, I used the program FSpy to match my camera perspective. Inside Blender, I started by adding in geometry to align with the wood posts, stairs, floors, and walls. I then projection mapped my footage onto this geometry. I added a few more lights to match the lighting of the shot. For the water, I added a plane and some animated noise texture for the small rippling effect. For the large ripples, I roughly modeled and animated this foot. I then made the water a dynamic paint canvas and set the foot to a dynamic paint brush. If you set the canvas to wave mode and make sure you have enough subdivisions, you get ripples. CG Matter has a great tutorial on this technique. I then added in the boot, pickle jar, bike, and these foamy patches for extra detail. For rendering, I first rendered out the water with only the jar and bike reflection. I rendered this at 50% resolution, so when I composite, I'll just scale it up by two. Side note, I learned that even visual effects for Hollywood films are sometimes rendered at half resolution and then scaled up by two in, in compositing. And it's a huge time saver if you can get away with it. Next, I rendered just the jar at a higher sample rate. And then since the bike doesn't move, I just rendered a high quality still frame that also included a layer with the bike shadow. I've posted a longer breakdown of the Blender part of this tutorial over on my Patreon. Along with the breakdown, I've provided all the files for this shot so you can dive in and learn even more. On top of this, I've been releasing other exclusive Patreon tutorials including how to create HDRIs, why Blender's shadow catcher is broken, multi-pass compositing basics, and more. These tutorials are more frequent than my main channel tutorials because they're less scripted and easier to create. So if you'd like to better your VFX skills and support me in the process, that Patreon page is the place to be. Also, the render setup techniques I use here are the same as my previous tutorial. I'll link that in the description. Now it's on to compositing. In all my tutorials so far, I've composited in Blender and been happy with the results. But Fusion is also free, and overall it has a lot more functionality than Blender's compositor. So let's dig in and check it out. Inside Resolve, I will simply import the EXR sequence we made from the background footage and add this to a new timeline. With this timeline open, we can switch over to the Fusion tab. This is where the VFX magic happens. As we go, I'll explain the different parts of this interface and how they compare with Blender. First, let's go to Fusion, Fusion Settings, User Interface, and for Zoom, click Ignore twice. Now we can zoom with just the scroll wheel. For starters, we can view our footage by selecting our footage node and hitting one or two. This will load it in either viewer one or two, and we can see these two dots represent the active viewer. In Blender, this is the same thing as using the viewer node. To keep things simple for this tutorial, I'll hide viewer two by clicking this button. Let's go to our import tab to import the water, jar, and bike elements. Back in the composite tab, we can open the media pool and drag these elements into our composite. We can rename the nodes by hitting F2. Let's close the media pool and if we hit one on our water element, it shows in the viewport. But if we check out our jar or bike, we'll notice they turn red when we try to view them. This is because we need to choose a render layer, so here we'll select jar combined. We'll need to do the same for the bike, selecting bike combined. And we'll also duplicate this for our bike shadow and select the bike shadow render layer. One thing to note here is that in Fusion, the information for the selected node is located in this right panel. In Blender, we're used to having the controls on the node itself. If we look at any of these CG elements, they look too dark. This is because we rendered and saved these elements with linear gamma values. Now, if you don't know what that means, check out this video I made which explains the basics of color spaces and gamma. But very basically, we work with linear data because it creates more accurate calculations when compositing, which makes for a more realistic composite. But as you can see, by default, linear images do not look good on displays. This is where we can use something called a viewer LUT. 
let's go to the upper right hand corner, click on this drop down, go to VFX input output and select linear to sRGB. Then let's turn this on. This LUT is taking anything we have in this viewer and applying the conversion to go from linear to sRGB. sRGB is the color space and gamma that most computer monitors use, which is why our linear renders now look correct. Inside Blender, this linear to sRGB conversion is done automatically when the view transform is set to standard. But you'll see if we change this to view the raw data, we see the unmodified linear data like we saw in Resolve. To start, we'll combine all of our CG elements. To put the jar over the water, let's add a merge node by either hitting shift spacebar and typing in merge, or we can use this node shortcut up here. The merge node is like the alpha over node in Blender, except it can do a few more things. In Fusion, node inputs are marked by triangles, and the output is marked by the gray square. We'll put the water in the orange input since that's the background, then we'll connect the jar to the green input for the foreground. Next we'll add another merge and merge our bike shadow on top of this. And finally, we'll merge the bike on top of all of this. If we view our result, it looks a bit weird because we have to add the resize node to scale up our water and jar since they were rendered at half resolution. And now everything looks good. And if we zoom out our viewer, we can see that we are at the correct 4K resolution. As far as graph organization goes, I'm building mine from the top down since this is similar to how it's done in Nuke, the industry standard. To do this, I'll right click, go to options, build flow vertically. And I'll also like to set arrange tools to connected so that the nodes snap into place nicely. In Blender, we're used to building left to right. As part of this vertical organization, I always want my orange background inputs to flow vertically downward. So let's merge our CG over our footage. We'll connect our footage to the orange background input going downwards and our CG to the foreground input. If we view this result, you'll see that our composite now looks odd. If we turn our viewer LUT off, we see that our raw footage looks correct, but now our CG is incorrect. So to solve this, instead of using a viewer LUT, I want to actually apply a LUT to our CG elements before they're merged over the footage. To add a LUT, let's open this effects library and open the LUTs dropdown, and then we see our VFX IO. Inside, we'll see our linear to sRGB LUT, but I'm actually not going to choose this. Instead, I'll choose linear to Blackmagic Film 4.6K. Long story short, in some trial and error, this most closely matches my raw footage. So I'll drag this LUT node right into my graph and close the library. Then we'll make sure to check pre-divide post multiply. Warning, uh, the whole color management approach to this project is probably not the best way to do things. It worked for me, which is why I'm sharing it with you, but I realized it might be kind of hard to apply to your own specific situation. So for now, let's focus on the other aspects of compositing. Now that we've fixed our issue, we can use our viewer LUT to apply the final stylized LUT provided by a threefold. This gives us an easy way to preview the final look. By the way, this viewer LUT is only for preview purposes. It's never applied to our final composite. So even though it shows here, if we make sure our composite is connected to the media out node and we go back to our timeline tab, you can see that the LUT is not applied. Okay, let's start to polish this composite first by masking out our wood poles. I'm going to quickly make some space in our graph, and then I'll turn off my bike shadow by selecting this merge and hitting Control or Command P to turn off the node. Let's then go to our water node and we'll add a Mac Control node. Let's also drag in this polygon node, and if we right click the output of a node and drag it to another node, we can see all the input options. We want our polygon to be a garbage mask to cut out the parts of the water where the wood posts should show. Now, with the polygon node still selected, we can draw our mask right in the viewer. This is a big reason I prefer Fusion to Blender, since in Blender you need to create masks in a separate window from the viewer. Back in Fusion, we need another mask for the back post, so let's create another polygon node, link it into the first one, and I'll draw our mask. If I look at this polygon node, you can see I've just created these two masks, and I'll add a slight amount of softening to the edges. Now, for our front pole, we need to cut out part of our footage and put it back on top after our CG elements. We'll create another map control node, adding our footage as the background input. Then let's add a new polygon node and connect this as a garbage mat. We can now draw our masks. Now, if we look at our mat control node, 
we'll see we need to invert this selection in the garbage mat settings. And now we want to merge this back on top of our shot. So we'll create another merge node and I can hold shift while I drag this node over the connection and it will slot in. And I'll attach our masked post to the foreground input. And just so you know, you can remove nodes by holding shift and dragging them out of the graph. Next, I'll add some overall color correction to get our CG elements matching our footage. To help with this, we'll turn on a color inspector in our viewer. And let's add a color corrector node right before our LUT. First, let's correct our black values. If I mouse over the darkest areas of the footage, I can see in our color inspector that over on the left here, our values are around 0.19. And the darkest value is about 0.13 but our shoe is at 0.08. So we'll lift our black values a bit. And then I'm going to increase our gamma a small amount. Also, make sure you go into the options here and check pre-divide post multiply to clear up those edge issues. If I now use our color inspector on the dark values of our shoe, we'll see they're now matching the values of our footage. Now this area to the left is a little too bright. To mask the color correction here, I could create a polygon, but an ellipse node will do the trick. I'll connect this to our color corrector, crank the softness up, and change the ellipse size in the viewer. One cool thing about most nodes in Fusion is that if you hit this button, you can create multiple versions of an effect. I can then switch between versions to see which I like best. Next, I'll make a few more color adjustments. First, I'll take down the saturation on the bike by adding a color corrector node to the bike element. Then I'll turn the bike shadow back on, apply a color corrector node, and add a slight amount of lift. Again, make sure to check pre-divide, post-multiply on these nodes. The colors are now looking pretty good, and remember, I can also turn this view roulette on and off to check my work. Now that we're adding more nodes, we can tidy things up by using underlays. Shift, spacebar, and search underlay. If I hold Alt, I can drag this behind a group of nodes, press F2 to rename it, and then right click and set a color. I'll add an underlay to group each CG element and my footage. And just so you know, if you want to select multiple nodes and move them, hold Control or Command, not Shift. If you hold Shift, you will detach the nodes from your graph. Yes, it's a little frustrating to learn this. Now for some finishing touches, first I want to add a blur to my bike as it's looking too sharp. So let's select our bike, shift spacebar, search for blur, hit enter, and I'll set the blur to 0.4. For the final touch, you'll notice our footage has this colored noise in it while our CG elements are very clean. To change this, we'll add a gray node right below our overall color correction. We'll need to turn the power down quite a bit. As you'll see in our footage, noise tends to be a lot more visible in the darker areas than in the brighter areas. So when matching noise, it's best to start by matching the darkest areas of your footage and CG elements. This left side works well for this in this shot. As you can see, our grain node gives us control to match each color channel. So in our viewer, we can toggle down this color menu and start with the red channel. I'll up my red difference quite a bit. Then I'll switch to my green channel, and then I'll switch to our blue channel. We'll see we need to increase the blue slightly. There are further controls for the softness, size, and spacing of the grain that you can play with to get closer to the footage. Finally, in this spread tab, we can modify this curve so that the noise is more visible in the darker areas than in the highlights, just like our footage. And now we have some really nice noise. On my own time, I tweaked this shot a bit more, but those really are most of the effects and techniques that I use to get my final composite. I want to deliver this ungraded version to the guys at threefold. And remember, this viewer LUT is not applied to our composite, and we can see that this is true in our timeline tab. So without the LUT applied, I can switch over to the export tab, and here I'll export a 4K EXR sequence. I then gave this sequence to the threefold guys for their final edit. If you want to apply a LUT, we can come to this color tab. Any coloring that's done here comes after the compositing, just like the tabs are ordered. To apply the LUT, I simply right click this node and go into the LUT folder to find the LUT they provided. I can then head back to the export tab and create an H.264 file for faster previewing and feedback. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a boy who made YouTube tutorials. He recorded his audio using his phone inside a sock, holding it rather awkwardly in his hand. And many people noticed it, some pointing and laughing, others downright confused. So one day, the boy went to the town square and found some generous patrons. 
he also brought some products with him, put up a booth, called it Gum Road, and people also bought those as well. Because of the generosity of the people, the boy was then able to purchase a proper microphone, turning this boy into a man. A man with two hands, completely free, to pray and give thanks. Seriously though, your support, whether it's on Patreon or Gumroad, goes into making these tutorials better for everyone. So I really appreciate it if you can support me one way or the other. And remember, all patrons have access to all the project files and elements for this tutorial, including the raw footage, CG renders, and Blender and Resolve files. I've also released an in-depth Blender breakdown of this shot and other exclusive tutorials already out waiting for you. It's one heck of a package, so head over and check it out. The page is linked in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching and learning with me. I hope you enjoyed the sunset, and I'll see you in the next video.